uh, beaten to death around five years back. You would have not even heard it because uh, uh, around eight years back or even 10 years back, it was in such a huge hype. Uh, you, you guys understand Gartner hype cycle. There is a cycle which says it's a, so till 2012, it was shown in a dipping side where, you know, it was no more a hype nor it had any future. And then after that, they removed the semantic web altogether from the Gartner cycle. So if you have patience to listen to those, I'm quite happy, but there are certain interesting things I'll be sharing with you. Uh, it has not come up, so the vision what they had, they wanted to uh, do it in a different form. Uh, if you see the emphasis by Google and all the search engines are doing differently. So I'll just share about uh, what was the earlier attempt, what they have made and what is it coming back, I just wanted to share that. must have heard of JSON at least, JSON in terms of the object exchange and uh, wh how it became popular. I think most of you might also be knowing that, you know, that is the most uh, standard way right now to exchange data. Uh, so the topic might sound a little vague, but I'll go with the, some of the basics and also I'll tell why, you know, this uh, whole thing is happening. Uh, let's get started. My name is Janardhan. I work for HP. Uh, I'm the part of the R&D team uh, who is doing the private cloud administration. It is mostly, I work on the manageability side. Uh, we do the cloud infrastructure management. It's mostly a browser-based software, so we use all the web technologies uh, required for making it happen. And on server side, we use Java. So I am part of the enterprise division who works on server storage and networking. I have been associated with web for the last 18 years. Uh, from the time, whatever you are seeing as the browsers are the ones which I had used as my primary browser for a long time. So that starts with Netscape Navigator. Navigator 3 is what I got started with. And then uh, IE, because most corporates, we need to ensure that we are using that. And uh, Mozilla, uh, you remember the reincarnation of uh, Netscape Navigator, and then Mozilla, and then the prime time Google took over, and then uh, Chrome is the most favorite browser for most people at least. In this journey, what has remained is, you know, uh, my passion to be associated with technology has been there. I have seen that, you know, technology changed from year to year, or the corporates change hands in terms of the roles they are, the dominant position they have held. Uh, that helped me in terms of staying connected with the technology. In addition to that, I also have a passion, the passion for, you know, watching movies. I enjoy movies. I think, how many of you have watched uh, Bahubali? Okay, so how many of you watched two times? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Okay, so I'm quite, uh, uh, quite uh, thrilled uh, watching movies. Uh, that is my favorite uh, pastime other than uh, technology. The reason I put this uh, picture is not just because you know, I'm passionate about movies. What I've seen is uh, really the way uh, the miraculously, you know, if, you, if you've not seen the movie, there is a baby who is, you know, who miraculously is saved, uh, you know, uh, by one of the women who is carrying him to the shore so that, you know, he's in safe hands. This whole thing happened so miraculously, it's unbelievable, okay? And if you see a similar state, JavaScript also for the duration, what it has done. <laughs> I, I really find it very surprising. The companies have changed, the generations have changed, but JavaScript actually survived all through this. And it is, with all its imperfections, if you just want to contrast in terms of uh, a language to be put in place, uh, if you take C language, you know, approximately it took around four years for Dennis Ritchie put that in place. And the project Java, approximately took the similar time of four years. Now compare it with a language like JavaScript, which is put in 10 days with all the rework and all the things, or you know, maybe even if you share or you know, bundle it all, all the wisdom coming together in 10 days. And there is a lot of parallel that you see from, you know, uh, this is how I learn technology and learn uh, the, uh, the movie part of it, right? It got saved because ECMA script, if you go to ECMA website, you will not find the word called JavaScript. The ECMA script, the whole standard that is there, it is not influenced with the corporates the way, you know, if you have seen Java, if you see Oracle bought Java, and then, you know, what happened to that, there are a lot of people migrating out and other stuff. So the way I find it, JavaScript was the most amazing journey that it had. I think that's what uh, makes it, you know, still survive till now. Now next, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we, I'm going to talk about linked data, what is that? And then there are a lot of jargon here, so, you know, it, it's good we go step by step. I'll take you to step by step. And I will also take you through some of the most common one right now, Google Now. So 
So how many of you have used or seen Google now, experienced it? Yeah, so it's quite a simple one. It's so effective, it's so productive. But you know what, it, what Google is doing? It's collecting a lot of your personal information and also from the other people who are using it and bringing out to your best experience. So we will talk about that, how can you use the link data, mix it with your apps so that you know your apps are more productive and more useful. And more, we will talk about that. Now, who are the three kinds of people I'm trying to address with this presentation? One is the web developers. Okay, <laughs> I'm not mimicking anyone here. <laughs> web developer, <laughs> web developer with a job, web developer without a job. So either category, web developers is one of the key things because JSON LD is driven from the web development community. Okay, uh, JSON LD, the influence that it has is purely from the web development side. The second is the entrepreneurs, because the link data opens up a lot of opportunity for you, a lot of opportunity where uh, you have not seen it before. I'll just share some examples from more on amusement side, but you know, if you combine it with the visualizations, uh, what the previous session has conducted, it's really mind boggling. So you can do really miracles there. And the last part of it, the user, user experience designers. So if you see, it's not just about conveying data. You know, it's about making something more meaningful to the user and making the person more productive. So how is the user experience coming into play? So I'm going to combine all three things and uh, cover it. And I thank uh, Chris for suggesting that, you know, in terms of visualization, instead of going the SEO, the search engine optimization way, we are going to the different direction of visualization. So I hope it's really useful to you all. And uh, what is it for each of you? Uh, JSON LD, uh, if you are a web developer, JSON LD is something you will be coding. And if it is your entrepreneur, you know, you will come to know what are the lot of open data, linked open data sources available for you to start your business or start your idea. And the last one is the cards UI. Uh, there are, and each of the cases, uh, linked data, all three are independent. I just want to tell you that these are not tightly coupled. Uh, link the JSON LD can exist independently of linked data. Similarly, cards UI can be, I'm just taking one example from each of the areas and covering it. Okay, so I, how many of you have used metadata or micro data, micro format so far in your Okay, so, so I will try to cover more details of it. I don't see not many people use it, uh, but I will cover um, as much possible. And uh, you already mentioned about Google now, how many people have used it, okay? Right, so what is semantic? Let's get to the very basics of what is semantic. You must have heard in your, uh, in the programming world, you use the word semantic. But in general, semantic means, you know, if you say HTML5, they say that there are a few uh, semantic elements that got added. That means that, you know, uh, these have some meanings. They are not just divs. Divs are something very general purpose. But here, these are nav navigation, article, and section. So they have a particular meaning. So when you uh, think of that, you can associate, you know, it is an element which is related to navigation on some sites, like that. Similarly, age. Age is just finally a bit, a bit of, it's an integer. And integer can be any data. But here you're particularly saying age is an integer. So you know that it will never go below zero. And you also know that it may be at the most 120, 130. It may reach, it may not reach 1,000 or 10,000. So, so that is what the semantic associates. It can be age of a girl. It can be anything. So this is just an example of what semant semantic is. The funny part is semantic is actually the meaning. So you cannot say what semantic means is the meaning. So that's <laughs> OK, how many of you uh, know who is Tim Berners-Lee? OK, so Tim Berners-Lee is credited for being the inventor of the web. Uh, the, HTA, the, the basic HTTP and HTML, he put it together because he was so much frustrated with the different types of systems that were there. And then he got so frustrated, he wants to uh, readily refer data. Yeah, when he's going through 10 different documents, whenever he has to go through glossary from a different document, he has to see, he sees that you know, it's there on a different type of system and it's not linked. So he started establishing the links, the hyperlinks, what he called, and then that became so revolutionary that really started off the whole innovation and the web uh, technology. So he is credited for that. Unfortunately, I have a lot of uh, sympathy for him because he dreamt of uh, things very grand and very good for human beings. But unfortunately, the technology direction sometimes did not go in favor of that. Uh, for example, even before going to semantic web or what we call web 3.0, it's also called web 3.0, he had a vision for web 1.0. Uh, you know what he thought about? Two things. He never felt that developers will ever do hand coding of HTML. Okay, he felt that it will be mostly like a VC wig, what you see as wikis or something, it's so easy to write. You don't do HTML tag and then head and body and other stuff. He felt that it's more like a VC wig editor, a word document. You don't generate a doc by coding it into the templates, right? You just uh, say what do you want in terms of form. So that is one thing he thought. Second thing he thought was the browsers are read-write. 
if you see the current browsers are read only you normally unless you know you click a button to change the content you don't do that so there was one browser that w3c has uh, actually supported for a very long time the browser name is amaya uh, i don't think they are supporting right now but that browser is something any page you can go and then start modifying of course since you don't have the permissions you cannot really save it on the server but the browser is built that way so that was one of the visions of uh, tim berners lee but that didn't happen as much he had another vision so now after he saw that 20 years or even around 1919 uh, around that 2000 time frame uh, he felt that you know web has been extremely successful now he felt that you know we should take the web to the next level for that he felt uh, whole of the web the html markup is mainly for the human beings to consume which means that you know you have the styling you have the layout uh, you know how easy is it to go to one page to other page and then consume the data so that was very successful so humans are fantastic in terms of the scientific reports in terms of the data you want entertainment everything is linked so you just click a link and you can go across the world and fetch documents so it has been very successful but then he felt that we have to now take it to next level which means computers should start understanding the data what we are producing not just human beings reading it but also computers should consume it so that was the vision he set for web 3.0 uh, there is a very interesting ted video i would encourage you to watch that i have also tweeted it it's a it's a very good video he has the vision about the past it is how he invented the web and then he also talks about you know how to go next so uh, it is there on tweet the js js javascript conference i put that sorry jquery conference i put that Uh, let's see a brief about this. this is just for amusement but it does help in terms of driving certain points okay uh, rithik roshan one of the uh, popular stars in the hollywood in the, sorry bollywood and is an actor and you want to say uh, try strike a relation with bangalore uh, uh, at one thing i'm sure that he is not born in bangalore so there is no direct association with that but uh, i have an entity called actor and actor typically what are the attributes if you are creating a json object for him what are the things you will create an actor will have an age maybe place of birth and uh, he may have his own date of birth age uh, spouse uh, maybe something like that right so you will have those and uh, place typically uh, it's a city or it's in which uh, state or you may have you know things like uh, the population in that or the area in square feet that may be there so these are two different entities so a structured data is individual entity individual entity you are seeing you can take it as if you are more comfortable with json you can just assume it as you know two json objects there the link data is about associating them associating them with some common attributes so anyone can have if you are familiar with maybe you know all bollywood and then you know the stars can you see is there any relation between them any further relation in terms of how is rithik roshan related to bangalore any wild guesses huh? gold yeah correct so very good so one of the thing i could relate was wow you know what uh, uh, golden palms is owned by sanjay khan sanjay khan is uh, uh, his father of uh, susan khan that susan khan is ex spouse of uh, uh, rithik roshan okay so this is the relation if you see the link data part of it this one this one when i actually did the tool there is a tool uh, called rel find when i tried to do that i had this in mind but then it didn't show me this graph because it because uh, it's not the current marital status or relation is not the ex spouse so it didn't show me that but actually i found something more interesting is, can you think of any other relation how is it related to i'll just show that because i found it uh, has visited it can be uh, but there is no attribute called has visited there so there can be one more attribute so something i found surprising was this one so uh, rithik roshan and rajnikanth acted in a movie called bhagwan dada and bhagwan dada happens to be when rithik roshan was a child actor okay long long back and then rajnikanth was born in bangalore <laughs> okay so 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 this is this <laughs> so this is one of the surprising things i have to link data so i did, when i started off with that i knew the one on the top but then i didn't know about this kind of revelation so the link data can show a lot of things what i am just giving you a reason why you know a, making the computers understand the data and then visually represent certain things it can solve a lot of problems a lot of problems in the medicine field if you if you see what uh, the previous talk he talked about the common symptoms you just imagine the, on the left side you have a list of patients and list of symptoms and then you just want to relate to what are the common causes for that it can really do wonders 
Uh, now let's talk about web evolution, so how it has all started. So web, originally the web 1.0, what we call, it was mainly we were consuming data, which means that, you know, there was a whole repository, it's like a library, you go read a book and then come back. So that's what it was mostly the read only part. Then web 2.0 was about, uh, this is where, you know, we started becoming so wild in terms of uh, producing data, whether it is Facebook, whether it is Twitter, whether it is anything you think of. We started to review comments or, you know, a news article is there. We start uh, pouncing on that and then you produce a lot of data. So that is really labeled as web 2.0. And now we are talking about semantic web or web 3.0. Uh, there are two things that are really playing a major role here. Uh, one is, you know, we talk about Internet of Things. Internet of Things where, you know, objects or things are the ones which are going to consume as well as be connected. So that means that, you know, there is a responsibility that we should give right information and right direction to the devices which are going to be used. Similarly, the computers, computers which are doing the, you can take a simplest example you can think of is web crawlers or the Google search engines, right? They have to continuously process the data to show something meaningful to you, okay? And uh, they, uh, Google has actually given up, given up in terms of uh, how notorious people are when they write documents so laborious, uh, so uh, detailed that it, they lose in terms of the detailing, in terms of what is the relation that is there. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to, uh, uh, if you want to just uh, parse a whole uh, movie review, movie review of you know that is published uh, very recently, uh, it's very tough to say whether uh, the characters that are there in the page are they the character names in the movie or are they the names of the actor, or are they the names of the reviewer, or are they the names of anything who is in any, any crew in that. So it's very difficult to do that. So even Google is looking for some data which is more structured so that they can uh, give a more meaningful information back to users. So, so that, is, that, that is where really the web developers uh, have a role to play in terms of producing data which is more meaningful. Uh, I'll talk about more about these things in the later slides. Uh, okay, this is the most important slide. Uh, it took me almost two to three years to condense and understand why did the semantic web, when the initial revolution that happened, why did it fail? And what is it very different that Google is now emphasizing on Google and any of the search engines are emphasizing on? What happened was, if you see the simplest form of understanding, there is a, on the left side, you have the weak semantics, means the meanings are very direct, very direct in sense a primitive organism or primitive uh, a person can understand the details in the lower part of the quadrant, that is the leftmost. And on the higher side, you will see uh, the most complex ones. When web semantic web started off, it started off as an artificial intelligence, you know, uh, making the whole world so that we have mapped it, the whole real world into a relational uh, part, a relation in terms of, you know, the concepts, the conceptual part, or, you know, we call something called ontologies, uh, that is there on the top, right? The, all the concepts have to be translated into scientific way, more in a graph, where you know, everything is related to everything else. They started building it from that fashion, where you know the scientists, all the people who are very knowledgeable and the bright minds have started looking from that angle. So they wanted to make uh, the whole web, the data that is there on the web in a graph form. If you say graph as a data structure, the graph form, they wanted to achieve that. And that's where it went into a huge a huge list of things in terms of the, uh, uh, we call it RDF, and there are many other things what they have come up with, tuples, uh, all that I will cover in the next part. So they started there, and then from there if you see, now where Google is positioning or any of the search engines mainly are positioning is at a different level. So they are now coming somewhere in middle, middle so that it is not very complex and not also compromising in terms of making it so simple that it is not so worthy. So they are not in the extreme form, but they are somewhere in the middle. So I will explain you what it means further. Now let's understand the history of semantic technologies. If you have heard of any of these words, it's so confusing that, you know, at some point we start thinking, okay, what's happening around, right? Uh, first thing is metadata. Uh, metadata was, you know, when, uh, when, the, when we started off with the web, every page was very nice. It had a markup and people can instantly read it. I can know from the heading that, you know, the topic that is being discussed in this article is uh, blah, blah, and then I know exactly what is the detail. But then we wanted to have the metadata. Metadata is what is it talking about, the document, who is the author of the document, or the keywords. Uh, the most common things you will find in the web pages are the keywords, okay? Uh, so we started describing that way. Then we went into a form where I mentioned about semantic web where, you know, RDF. RDF is one of the resource description frameworks. So we wanted to describe the whole web as a graphical graph form and then so that you know, everything is interconnected. Then we went into micro format. Micro format is nothing but an extension. Uh, you will have the same web page 
and in, if you go into the HTML, you will start spotting some of the things that got attributes got added. So embed, you are embedding the whole. In, for example, you have an address. Uh, for example, for this venue, uh, Chancery Pavilion, along with the Chancery Pavilion, what is visible to the user, you start embedding span, and then you mention about the item property, and you say that you know this is a, a latitude and longitude of this place, so that if someone is, over, is seeing on their mobile, they can exactly see that you know click on it and go to map and see. So all those are facilitated through embedding that uh, microformat markups. Microformat and microdata are a little bit related, except that microformat is completely out of W3C. That means the World Wide Web Consortium is not involved, but it is by a more uh, open source group or a community driven one. And uh, microdata is a markup. You know, they do similar things, which means that inside the HTML, inside your divs, you start embedding some extra data, which is more friendly for the, uh, for the search engines to take in. And then you come to linked data. That's where we are talking about. I'm going to talk mostly focus on the current Google, JSON, LDA, and schema.doc. That is the core focus of this session. But otherwise, in a historical perspective, it is always good to understand how it has evolved. And metadata, this is one example. In case you have not understood the verbal form of it, what I mentioned. If you see here, uh, if you see here, every page has a heading. In the header, you have these aspects of you know the name, keywords, and the author. So this is how every, even now we use it because search engines still uh, use that. But it so happened that you know Google started in terms of page ranks and all, it went ahead in terms of the content. If you see a lot of content, what Google was processing, it started looking into the page rank in terms of the how closely the words are associated with what you are searching for. They started relying on that more because people started misusing the metadata. Which means that if you had seen, uh, if you had ever tried to search for a book or a PDF document on the web, there are some web pages, any document you search, they will directly go to and say, I have this document for you. Once you go there, they'll say, click on this to install a software. They, it could be a pirated one, anything it can be. Because they were actually misusing all the metadata, and then they were making as if they dynamically create the metadata so that search engines feel that, you know, that is the thing, and it comes in your top 10 of your Google search. So that is when, you know, Google started saying that, you know, this is not the way I should go forward. Next came. Uh, the search results, for example, you know, uh, the J jQuery conf, right? jQuery.conf.in is the website for this uh, conference that is hosted. So if you just see the format of it, okay, this is something uh, Google does. It takes the bits and pieces from the first few lines of text, and then it embeds there, it shows there. And then if you see here, it has uh, some detailing about, you know, uh, what is the date and what is the start time of it and registration. So, but that is in the simplest form. Now, some questions you might have if it is just flashed on your first uh, page of your results. Uh, uh, is this official jQuery conference? So, how does Google know that you know this is an official jQuery conference and it is not uh, uh, what you know some people who are very passionate about jQuery have started it? How how do you differentiate that? Because here in in some of the headings it was mentioned this is the first official jQuery conference mentioned, but if you see it doesn't it may not appear there on the top. And the second thing is from this information there is a mention of you know. Uh, 9M, I can do registration, but is it a walk-in registration or do I need to do, prior, or is it a paid one? I may not get the full idea about that. The third aspect is, any of my friends attending this, you know, if they are attending, it's more likely that, you know, I will associate with them, maybe I, I have a word with them and then do. And the fourth aspect is, if there is registration, is it still open? Uh, even if it is the third day of the conference, maybe that I'm interested in the f uh, half part of it, I may still want to join. So these kind of details are they provided. So what link data or the JSON LD I'm going to talk about is just ensuring that you know your content is there on the first page and also whatever user needs it. And how do you fetch it from different places? So that is the whole point. Now let's take uh, another example. Another example is this is about RDF. As I mentioned, you know, it is a, a web 1.0. We had resources. The uniform uh, resource locator is nothing but the URL we are talking, right? The R is the resources, right? Resources can be any mi multimedia video clip. It can be image. It can be a document. It can be anything. Uh, description through resource description frameworks. You, know, you are actually describing. That is nothing but you know, explaining that the structure of the document and how is it linked with other documents you are making the computer understand. So that is the whole purpose of uh, resource description framework. It's not a language, but it's a model. As I mentioned, it's like a graph representation. It is based on XML, and XML, you know, it has been, it was popular quite some time. And uh, roughly metadata, if you want to know the timelines, uh, metadata, the previous one, what I told, that happened sometime in 1999. And then uh, since 99 to 2005, sometime RDF was very popular. It's still, uh, it's still uh, supported by all the search engines, 
but in terms of popularity and the peak of it, right, uh, RDF was very popular during that time, till 2005 roughly. And subject predicate object, you know, if you had learned any time the English or, you know, artificial intelligence or logical reasoning, all this stuff, you would have very commonly, come. if I had to start the semantic web conference maybe five to eight years back, I would have started actually with this slide and explaining you how the world is in terms of subject, predicate, and object. Uh, so that would have been quite a boring one, but uh, okay, let's see how it is now. Now let's talk about structured data. So we are talking about, we first talked about the metadata, how you know in the header you put it, and then we talked about uh, uh, if you give a plain jQuery conf, uh, how does the search result come if you do not have that data. And this is an example where I just give instead of jQuery conf, which I know uh, thoroughly, I'm just giving conference Bangalore. Just I want to know all the conferences uh, that are there in Bangalore for this month if you want to look at. So if you see here, uh, it has shown a Bangalore Fashion Week, uh, EDU Summit, and this. It has shown it in a nice snippet down as if, you know, it is giving exactly the date when it is. Now, what is it that has happened behind that? This is one example of structured data. Uh, if you remember the example I gave in terms of Rithik Roshan and Bangalore, every entity, that object is just structured data, okay? It is not linked data. So this is one example of structured data. Uh, so I have ensured that we have covered it as part of the item prop. There's a URL, and then I mentioned a name, and this is for the first item. The, if you go into the source, you will find this one, item prop, right? So for rich snippet, what Google calls, this is called rich snippet. It can actually embed a lot of information. It can even give the ratings of this from the past. If there was a last conference, say, last year, it can collect that and then still fetch it and show that. So that is possible. Now, linked data, what is linked data? Uh, linked data is data with context. Context means there is some reference point with which you are associating it, that is one thing. And so the, this is actually mainly for machines to consume. That is the search engines or the crawlers, what we are talking about, it is for them to consume. Search engines build the knowledge graph. If you heard of something called knowledge graph, what Google talks about, that knowledge graph is built based on this data or the structured data, what we are actually filling in. And establish authority of a data owner. As I mentioned in the earlier case, right? Is it an official website or is it a, uh, some, some people passionate about it doing it? What is the relation with the jQuery foundation if you want to know? So these are the things that help in terms of establishing. Uh, now, very specific, link data, one of the ways of realizing link data is JSON-LD. Just like, you know, uh, you can have a problem statement and the implementation can be done in any language, uh, Java, uh, C, and anything. Similarly, this is the case. Link data is a general concept, and JSON-LD is one way of implementing. And this has picked up because of last two, three years, the search engines have come together and said, you know, we will start supporting it uh, for good reasons. The first reason is, if you see over a period in terms of the interchange between uh, 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 between uh, uh, whether you take it as between two services or whether it is an interaction between the front end and back end, JSON has become so popular compared to XML, right? So that is one of the reasons. And the JavaScript any, everywhere. If you see uh, the way server side JavaScript has taken over in terms of the Node.js or in terms of the interchange, everything is JavaScript. So this is another way instead of uh, doing with the XML based mechanism, uh, JavaScript is one way to represent the data and link. I uh, shun the semantic grand vision. As I mentioned in the graph, right, I mentioned, you know, where they started with top, instead they came somewhere in between. Let's see how to go make it further. It's a W3C specification that uh, came out in 2014. And disambiguation. So if you search in Wikipedia, you will mostly find that, you know, disambiguation. If you give a term which is, uh, say, Apple. Apple, if you give, it can be a fruit, it can be a music band, it can be a, a Apple company. So if it is Google, uh, when you say Apple, it directly gives the all iPhone model with the prices because Google knows what you're actually searching. I, they know that, you know, anyone above 13 don't search for Apple fruit in the web, <laughs> right? So, so it knows, but whereas Wikipedia will give you that, you know, you have to do disambiguation, which means that, you know, you could be meaning that, you could be meaning anything. So it gives you choices. And uh, reuse. Uh, reuse in terms of so that, you know, you produce one structure and then it can be linked to any other structure so that you just have references. Uh, in the example, what I have taken, say, jQuery conference, what is happening now, if there is a link mentioned to jQuery foundation, which is the jQuery.org, then it makes it more authentic. And if jQuery.org makes a links to JS, jQuery conference, then Google understands that, you know, yes, this is the authentic data. It's not a, a, a fan club or something. Yeah. And authentic, authentic because you know you have a source which is the authority in one link with the ID you are referencing, and that helps you achieve that. Uh, this is the W3C standard; it's an official one because there are many formats and many things that came in between. 
which are not really W3C compliant or a part of W3C. So this is one format that has evolved as a, as you can see this as last as you know, January 14th is when the first version got. Now let's do, and you know, a lot of theory is there. So let's do some uh, browsing. Uh, any of you have a browser, I cannot flash it on the screen. Maybe if you are interested, uh, you can just do a search. Uh, the first thing I want to do is, I want you to Google on uh, uh, baby doll. Just search the keyword baby doll. If you don't have it, fine, I'm going to tell the results anyway. So what are the, what are the, all the things that can come when you type baby doll? Guesses, wild guesses or crazy guesses? <laughs> Is it baby doll song? Okay, very good. Singer, okay. Baby doll, okay. <laughs> A very noble thought. <laughs> okay. Ah, right, right. Okay, I hope you have, I cannot uh, show the visuals here, that's why I'm restricting it here. But I think you would have got the thought what I'm trying to share. So, okay, this is how, for those who are uh, not very, <laughs> uh, okay, the first one will be the actress video. You, you should be seeing, if you are in the uh, google.co.in domain, <laughs> certainly you will see uh, the lady. Who is the lady? Sunny Leon, very good. So you will see that as a video clip, which is very nice to click and easy to click. That's the first one you will get. The second one is toys, dolls, you know. Uh, that's the second one you will get. Then you will get uh, actress pictures, and that is the reason I couldn't not show it here. There are all set of images, are you meaning this? <laughs> okay. And on top of it, there are also some lingerie products from Victoria's Secrets with the same brand name as Baby Doll. And then comes Toys R Us. You know, for kids, if you are planning to buy toys, there are a few section or category in that, which is a baby doll. And then you have IMDb, uh, there's a movie, uh, it is, I think, 1956 or sometime. I didn't know, I never knew about it till I went to Wikipedia. So there is also that. So there are so many combinations out of which uh, Google has to decide what is right for you to show. And, uh, and if you compare the same thing with Wikipedia, okay, Wikipedia, uh, uh, where, you know, the first thing it shows is it's a 1956 film. There is a baby doll movie, uh, Hollywood movie, 1956. And then it talks about clothes in terms of clothes and various categories that are there. It says, you know, did you mean anything in terms of baby doll in these categories? Then it talks about film and television. There are serials or anything that are related to baby doll. And every time with that title, it shows it. Then it shows the songs. In songs was the, then that's where it comes, you know, our Sunny Leon famous song comes there. So if you compare the contrast, there's a huge contrast, right, from Google. Google is personalizing to an extent where it really knows what you're really meaning. <laughs> and, 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 it's, and it's not surprising. Uh, you, Google actually publishes Google Trends. How many of you follow that? The most search person in 2014, who is that? Not Narendra Modi. <laughs> the most search person in India, according to people, is Sunny Leon. Second comes Narendra Modi. <laughs> and, and anyone in the top five list, there are, I think, three, uh, three, uh, three Bollywood actresses. And uh, that's what, and uh, 2013, anyone knows who comes top? Good guess. Any other guesses? Arvind Kejriwal. Very good. Any other? Uh, it's uh, 2013 also, it's Sunny Leon. Sorry to disappoint you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let me check a little more back. 2012. Okay. It has to be cut enough. See that falling. <laughs> Any other guess? It's 2012 also, it is the uh, same. Sunny Leon. <laughs> yes. So, uh, and anybody from West Bengal here? Google also shares a lot of info. Okay, by the way, West Bengal leads in terms of the searches. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and, and, and this, is, this is quite surprising because uh, I think that way I was, uh, I was feeling very bad for Narendra Modi ji because I felt he's just coming second, but I've seen that in the last three to four years, he never came in top 10 at all. And he came first time in 2014, his second position, I think he deserves a good. <laughs> okay, so, so the final element here is, you know, the whole problem what we're trying to do is disambiguation. Disambiguation means, you know, removing the ambiguity in terms of what is you're trying to look for. So that is the whole point here. Now, uh, one of the important concepts in linked data is context. There's a concept called context. 
okay, context because every item you take it could be a person, it could be a film, if you see the previous example it could be a film, uh, it could be a place name, it could be a nickname also, if you see one of the um, uh, nickname, baby doll is a nickname of an actress, Hindi film actress, so it can be anything, so you have to figure out what it is, so the context is very important. Context, it's not very different. Uh, anything, whatever is being covered here, nothing is revolutionary new. It's always been there, but with a different name. So at the rate, context is a very important aspect uh, in, uh, in linked data. Uh, how is the data should be interpreted? It's nothing but if you are familiar with the XML and DTD, it's actually the schema or the DTD. run scored by the cricketer, it can be anything. So it's actually giving meaning to that. And the context came from a schema from a web, from any schema. Uh, so context is one thing what I'm going to explain about one example called schema.org. Schema.org is giving you all that context, what is required from a JSON-LD point of view, but it is a lot more than that. So which means that there are many schemas. One example is Facebook. Actually, Facebook came up with the concept a little earlier in terms of the schema. There is something called Open Graph Protocol, okay, OGP. If you type OGP.me, uh, you will get their website with all the data. So they are most focused on people, people and the relations. If you see the Facebook suggestion that it comes is based on the graph that it builds. Uh, for every individual, it has a relation. And then it says that the father, sister, mother, all these things come into picture. So they were more focused on the people and also organizations. Uh, BBC also has something that for ontology, uh, not to be confused with oncology. Uh, ontology is about, again, you know, uh, building that vocabulary with some relationships between them. So BBC has, BBC themselves, they realize that they have four different verticals. Uh, there is one vertical in terms of the news, that is in terms of the media. One is a web point of view, there is a news, and then there is a news and there in terms of radio and TV. And they also have uh, some channel, CBC, CBBC or something. So there are various other things. They realized that within the organization, they had uh, different structures, different data types, and then they were following very different. So it is not one division cannot consume the data of other division. So they came up with the concept of BBC oncology and ontology. And that helped uh, in terms of building relation with other uh, other uh, uh, other databases like you know it could be Google, it could be Facebook, they started uh, sharing the data. So that way the open data is helping a lot of other companies also. Schema.org, this is one of the important element or the, uh, for linked data or the revolution that is uh, happening in terms of linked data and, uh, uh, and JSON-LD. Uh, these are the four uh, search engine companies came together. There were many other formats, as I mentioned, schema.org, right? There were many other uh, formats already available, but they felt that from a search point of view, representing different types of entities, what users might be needing. So they grouped together the vocabularies and came up with this concept. So if you see, pretty much it covers uh, all the web search engines, except for maybe in China, where it is not very popular. All other four major companies, are. they came together to develop this website for schema.org, where they said, we agree upon certain attributes, like DTD. They agreed, say, they said that all four of us will agree on a DTD, so that all web developers, whenever they say an entity or a thing, they actually should mention attributes related to that. So that's what essentially they came up with. I'll give an example in the next slide. So their the main purpose is create, maintain, and promote. They also encourage that companies or organization can contribute to the schema.org, which means that uh, in the medicine field, there are many companies, pharmaceutical companies, coming and defining their own medical records and medical data which means that they are open to take that information also. Similarly, uh, film fraternity or film group who are mostly into the production and publishing, they can also have a schema that is defined for the film industry separately. So each industry, each division can actually have the common schema to talk here. They also encourage, they really encourage the structured data here. That's what it is. Now, things not strings. This is one of the major milestone uh, from what Google is developing because it wants to build the knowledge graph based on things so that they are entities and they have relationships with each other, that's the whole idea. So they came up with this, uh, where you know the, the article that says introducing knowledge graph, things not strings, because till 2012 or before, they were doing the hard work of churning or the parsing the whole strings and trying to make sense of it, and they were so utterly confused in terms of what the web page is talking about. As I mentioned some examples, right? they were having all that issues. So they started encouraging this kind of thing. I, there are a lot of tools available, I'll show one by one the examples. Uh, schema.org, what are things? 
things are something which you can very much relate in day to day life. One is you're talking about person, organization, place, product, event. So these are the various types. And you have the action, which is the, you know, action is one type where, you know, action could be you are rating a, uh, uh, rating in an email for a conference. Suppose a conference, after the conference is over, we send an email and then you do rate in terms of what is your satisfaction. That could be one. Medical entity, broadcast service, creative work, intangible. So these are the various categories. Uh, link data principles, uh, this is the principle, these are the principles that are laid by uh, Tim Berners-Lee and that has been followed. Uh, he's talking about the URIs uh, for naming things. You know, all the resources on the web, you already have a URL. For any uh, YouTube video, you have one unique uh, way to reach that video. Similarly, for everything, uh, just like people or the organization should have a unique uh, identifier. The HTTP, it should be based on HTTP because there may be other protocols that are possible, but the emphasis is more on HTTP because it's more standard. Uh, when someone looks up for a URI, provide useful information using that. Suppose I have my own uh, blog site or a web page. So in that web page, I will create not only information what is relevant for the blog, I will also have the data which are about my passions or which are I'm interested in different areas. So that, that one place, it can give a lot of information and links to a lot of other places. Include links to other URIs so that we can discover more things. So that helps in terms of the connecting of the overall network. <clears throat> I'll be a little faster. I think I'm running short of in terms of time. I'll do it a little faster. But uh, after the session is over, if you have more details, I'll be able to interact with you after that. Uh, if you see the jQuery conference event, just an example of you know structured data and the link part of it. So we can have a link for the jQuery conf that is 2015 right now, and then a link to the organization that is jQuery Foundation. This is not what visually seen by the user at the uh, in the front end, but actually it is the data that is embedded as part of that. And you have the jQuery conf 14 event just to get if you want to get the ratings or any other event happened last year, you want to get the satisfaction or any rating of speakers of that, you can always have that that link. Second thing is Confingen. If you see, most of us are registered to Confingen. Confingen supports us with, you know, the participant, speaker, organizer, and they themselves have organized many other events. So this kind of relation helps it helps in terms of the speaker having link to the, his own personal sites in terms of Twitter and all. So then what happens is, as an individual, I have just my blog site where I give it as a URL. Then everything anyone wants to know about me is all linked. So I'm giving information in terms of Twitter, Facebook, and other blogs what I also monitor. Implementation part is part two. Uh, okay, sorry, it's, I think it's not very visible, but what it's trying to say is here, this is one example of a JSON LD. Uh, the new type that got introduced is application LD plus JSON. And then this is the context, context in terms of schema.org, which is saying that, you know, what am I referring to? What is my DTD or what is my schema? And it is telling this is about a person. The name is here, and then uh, the URL, the unique URL for my website I will give here, and all the links in terms of my social networking site. The important aspect is here is the same as. Same as means, you know, I, this, is the, this is me. If you are anywhere referring here, this is me. So that way, there's a cross-reference. When, when somebody goes to this website, there's a reference back here to my website. So that way, I'm establishing also the authentic authority that, you know, this is the same person. Uh, people who are interested on the authentication or the security, this is being used for web payment also. The same link data uh, or the JSON LD part is being used for that because you are trying to establish a unique identifier for every individual. And the payment, payment mechanism also is going to be streamlined to that. Similarly, an organization. Organization is talking about the context. Again, it's just mentioning as organization. And uh, you pretty much have similar stuff here. Uh, there are some exa examples I'll go through. Uh, here, what is not very visible is this is about a RSVP. If uh, somebody has invited you for a party, here you can just go to Google, and then you just click on that at the end. There is an icon. And then it will give you how many people accepted it and whether you want to yes, maybe, or no. So it gives directly from there instead of even you don't need to open that. That is possible because of uh, uh, structured data, but link data gives you more options in terms of uh, linking more information you can have down and then connect it. Uh, some example, I'll just take one example in the interest of time. Uh, So these are the schemas what are defined by Google. And uh, this is pretty much same or similar to what schema.org is defining. Uh, this is one example where you can take a, a website. If you have your blog site or an event if you're hosting, my advice is you go through this uh, process. I, I will share it as part of the structured data marker helper. If you're organizing an event, you ensure that you give the URL here. And then once you start. It gives you an option to tag your elements. So if you are not very conversant with how to use the tagging or the JSON-LD, 
what it helps you is it will take you to your website. You can start selecting the uh, elements in the web page, the HTML, what you see, and start saying that this is the uh, event start date, what is the start time, which is the location. It gives you all that info. And then it will also generate you a JSON LD so that you can just directly copy paste in your header and you are ready, Google ready now, which means that you know Google will show you in a very systematic way for you. Uh, I'll just switch to the other one. Uh, this is another example where you know I can load an exam. This is a uh, I want to track track. Uh, I think it's not very visible here. Uh, the action that Google is allowing me to do is uh, go to action, which means that you know you want to go to a website. You have an event card, which means that if you see Google now, uh, if you have an email that comes to your uh, Gmail and then Google picks it up and says that if you have an event today, it will flash it as you are part of your today's calendar. And it nicely shows you a map and all that detail. So all that is possible if you start using this option. I'll show you an example here. Uh, if you see, uh, this is an example of rate. Uh, so jQuery conference, I can just uh, start and then rate here, and, uh, and it goes back. Similarly, this example is to view website. If I click on this, I directly go to the website. So all these options are provided here because it is not visible. If you see this web page, it is just about, you know, there's a test go to query conference. There's nothing that user can see, but it is the metadata or what I have embedded inside that is making Google take the decision. This is quite useful because many people struggle in terms of, uh, you know, uh, I want to get a, a rating from, the, uh, from my clients, so thousands of clients, but the thing is once I give a link to them to go to say SurveyMonkey or something, they, they find it very discouraging. I want to get a quick input from them. So for those kind of things, it's quite useful. Uh, next one is uh, the structured, da um, data, structured data testing tool. Uh, one example I'll flash is the film critic. So if you see film critic here, this is about a person, film critic, writing a blog about a movie. And in that movie, you, some of the interesting things, the person who is the editor is Lisa Kennedy, and she has given her uh, Google Plus website, which means that it's an authentic data, and it has a unique reference. It is pointing to Google Plus site of hers. And then it's talking about the movie name, the movie description it talks about, the movie name is Gravity, and it's giving links to uh, two people. One is, uh, one is Sandra Bullock and uh, George Clooney. And she's also giving in Wikipedia whom it is referring to. If there are people, celebrities with the same name but different geographies, you are actually avoiding all the ambiguity there. So they are giving the Wikipedia. So if you see here, this is how it is linked. This is actually an example of good example of linked data where you are giving as much information so that Google can take it and then start, uh, if you are going to this review, at the bottom it can put all the movies of George Clooney, which are which people other people have watched. So people also have seen, right? So how does Google do that? By helping with this information. Next, uh, okay, this is the last part. Okay. Mm. I think I overshoot my time. If you can give me just uh, three more minutes, maybe I'll close it. Uh, yeah. Okay. And if you uh, please use the law of uh, two legs <laughs> in case you feel it's too extended. <laughs> uh, okay. This is about the cards, cards UI. Uh, cards UI are quite popular. If you see uh, whether it is Twitter, uh, the rich content that comes to you, or you know, or if you see the Pinterest, uh, that is another popular utility which helps you in terms of you know, in a small window, it is able to uh, show the rich content what is possible. Uh, some of the uh, reasons why people use cards are, you know, the simple ma UI metaphor because we are so familiar with the cards and you can place them and you can delete them, do operate on them. Uh, fits the range of screens. You can see even to the Apple Watch, the card is a very convenient UI to show. Uh, and even if you magnify it to a very large screen, it can still fit because you can have a multiple layered uh, or a multiple column, columnar approach. Static and interactive, you can have cards which are static as well as interactive. You can have a media play option and all the stuff. And embed rich snippets. Uh, rich snippets, as I told you, the rating. Uh, if you want to show just a movie and then the ratings of that, all those come in one place. Or even the people, uh, your friends who have liked the similar movie, it, uh, that also comes there. And it is composable bits because you know each uh, card itself is a self-contained entity. And you can compose it with a rich content in terms of the diverse things what you can show. Uh, boot cards is one uh, one example one example of an implementation of cards. Uh, the whatever you are seeing on the right side is a boots, Bootstrap based uh, UI. It is being developed. It is developed. It is in a 1.2 or some version, uh, early stages. But the capability of it is as not as rich as the other two implementations. One implementation is Google Material Design is one. If you are an app developer to follow, 
the other one is the semantic UI. Semantic UI is another uh, framework, uh, the library that is available. It also has some interaction. If you click on it, it will give you add friend. You can make that person a friend. Uh, this is just an example of Twitter also has some suggestions on how to have your data embedded. This is one aspect of that. Uh, at the end, there are a lot of uh, uh, linked open data repositories that are available. Uh, if you, uh, this is for most of the entrepreneurs. There are so many uh, uh, linked data websites. This is one example it gives in terms of uh, the rich. Uh, I think it will take some time to load. It's uh, quite a rich graphic in terms of uh, what are the, uh, there are hundreds of open databases. Each organization, sometimes given governments, have ensured that you know the data of that country is published, whether it's medical records, whether it's a governance related data, all those, are, this is part of the transparency drive each company, is, uh, each uh, country is having. So all those data is available here. Last, okay, DBpedia is one website. Last, I want to just flash you know, the power of linked data. Uh, this is a little more complicated than what we flashed earlier. Start with Dhanush and then end with Sri Devi. Uh, can you guys think about what is the combination, what links both of them? <laughs> Tamil Nadu, okay. Any other? Rajnikant, okay. What is common with Rajnikant? Uh, they made a movie together, yes. Very good. Any other? Okay, so uh, my familiarity was still that one. I thought, you know, Chalbaz is one movie where Rajnikanth and uh, Sri Devi did, and some more movies they did, but you know, the Hindi movie. Uh, what this gives you is the rich set of data. Uh, the multiple combinations, yeah, this is the graph actually. Unfortunately, it's not very visible. I'll just tell you uh, Dhanush, it's showing Dhanush here, and then down you will have Dhanush, uh, wife is uh, Rajnikanth's uh, daughter. Okay, and then uh, Danush also did a movie with Sonam Kapoor. Sonam Kapoor is uh, Anil Kapoor's daughter, and Anil Kapoor's brother is Boni Kapoor. Boni Kapoor's wife is Sri Devi. So this graph actually, <laughs> this graph actually is so beautiful. The way it builds is really amazing. I'll just, uh, I, if internet is actually good, it shows the data very well. It starts building such a way that you know it started with Tamil Nadu. That is a common one, birthplace. Okay, and then it builds with film producer. Then it goes to actor, both are actors, very good. Then it builds the next level. So I have chosen an option for four levels of data. If I give two levels of data, it says, okay, they both are producers, and at the most it says, you know, Boni Kapoor is a producer, and Danush is also a producer. It just stops there. But then if I go four levels of depth, it starts building the whole graph. I have given the URL, you can just try it on your laptops. It's really amazing the way it builds. Sir. So the bottom part, if you see, it established that, you know, Ranjana movie, Sonam Kapoor did, and Sonam Kapoor, Anil Kapoor did, Anil Kapoor and Arjun Kapoor, Boni Kapoor, and then Sri Devi. <laughs> I just wanted to demonstrate the power of uh, linked data. Thank you very much.